house was broken into when I was 13. I grew up in a nice little suburban area. I actually lived on the very end of a large cul-de-sac. My mom worked 95, so she was always home shortly after I got home from school. My dad was medically retired from the military, but he still liked to work. He would do random small general contract jobs, so his work schedule was always random. Anyways, he was working on a house in the neighborhood close to ours. My bus route wouldn't take me directly to my house, so I'd have to walk for a bit. Sometime, I don't know when, but I'm guessing the guy saw me walking home. On a Tuesday, I saw a red SUV parked on the side of the road, about four houses down from mine. I never thought anything about it. Looking back, I remember seeing it several times parked in the general area after that Tuesday. Anyhow, one day I was walking home and the SUV was there. Didn't think anything of it, pure usual. I got home and went through our side door. I dropped my backpack and went up to the kitchen to grab a snack. My dad called on the house phone, asking if I was home, which, since I answered, I obviously was. He had forgotten his notebook and wanted me to grab it for him, so I hung up and ran up the stairs to get it for him. He was going to meet me in the driveway. I heard the door from the garage open. Thinking it was my dad, I yelled, I'm getting it. I heard footsteps, and I could just tell it wasn't him. So I sprinted downstairs and opened the front door running outside. Luckily, I saw my dad's truck and he could tell something was wrong. I told him that someone was inside our house. He stopped the truck, gave me his cell phone to call 911 and then he went inside. I'm guessing I scared the guy when I ran because he ran too. My dad ended up seeing him run and also saw his face, but he couldn't catch him due to his injuries. We called the cops and they came and we gave them our statements. Anyhow, to make a long story shorter, they ended up catching him about 20 to 30 minutes later. My dad gave a positive ID. They took him in and ended up towing the SUV. In this bag that he was carrying, he had a gun and zip ties. He had a bunch of other stuff in the SUV. We were pretty sure he was there to take me. I don't know what would have happened if my dad hadn't forgotten his notebook. This incident happened a few years ago when I was in my early 20s. I had moved out of my parents' place just a couple months prior into a small one-bedroom apartment. I lived there by myself since I was never really a roommate type of person and I didn't have a boyfriend at the time. It was on the first floor of a 150-year-old building, beautiful and well-maintained, but definitely had a few issues like uneven floors and crooked doors. I still loved it though especially since it had a bay window in the bedroom that overlooked the little park. The apartment was located in, let's call it a not so great part of town. Crime rates were high and there was a lot of drug trafficking and burglaries in an otherwise very safe city. I still never felt truly scared or unsafe when walking home. I always stuck to the very basic rules of how not to get abducted or killed like not walking through parks at night and not wearing headphones and all that stuff. One evening in May, I went to my friend's house for dinner, about a mile away from my place. At around 1.30 in the morning, I decided to leave and walk the short distance home. Since I had some wine, I didn't feel comfortable driving my car and left it parked there to pick it up the next morning. The streets were really quiet. It was a cool night on a weekday, so I didn't see a single person for almost an entire walk. Unfortunately, that changed when I was reaching my apartment building. I was still a few yards away when I saw a woman standing in the front door pressing seemingly random buttons on the intercom. There were only five apartments in my building, and I knew all of the tenants. She certainly wasn't one of them. She wore a shabby beige jacket, and her hair looked like it hadn't been brushed in a while. She seemed a little disoriented, and something about her gave me a very uneasy feeling. It might have been the way she moved, a little slower than a regular person. Or maybe I was just paranoid because it was the middle of the night. I decided to take a little detour around the back, hoping that she would be gone when I came around from the back. When I turned around to my street again, she was still pressing buttons on the intercom of the building next to mine. 
I crossed the road, thinking that she would probably not notice me if I walked from the other side of it. However, she did notice me when I was a couple yards away from her. She stared at me for a few seconds, and then started to slowly walk towards me. At this point, I was seriously freaked out and just ran past her to my building, unlocking the door and pushing it closed as fast as I could. I ran up the stairs to my apartment, went in and immediately locked the door behind me. I started to calm down a little bit and felt silly, thinking that I overreacted about a slightly confused person not doing anyone harm. I went to my bedroom window to see if she's still out there, and when I drew my curtains I almost screamed. She was standing right beneath the window looking up at me with the creepiest and unsettling smile I've ever seen. I panicked and after freezing for a second I went to grab the phone to call the police. When I came back to the window she was gone. I couldn't see where she went because the trees were blocking most of the view of the street. A few minutes later I saw a police car. They were circling the block two or three times, but I don't think they found her. Thankfully to this day I haven't seen her again and I have moved to a safer part of town. Her creepy smile still gives me chills when I think about it. I hope we never meet again lady. When I was a younger boy, in my early teenage years, my mom had a family of white Siberian tigers which stood in the living room facing out the window onto the street. They ranged from small plush ones to a large, real life-like, adult white Siberian tiger. Usually they received comments when people passed because she had arranged them to stand together like a family. It was winter time and some of the houses on my street had already been targeted by people with various belongings being stolen ranging from a couch to a money jar to a personalized angel in someone's house which was made for their daughter who had been stillborn. There were council workers working on the hill corner fixing the pavement. Sometimes if you passed by they would talk to you for a short period just to be friendly since we were young. I was out one night with a friend and we were talking to them about the houses being targeted around the area when one of the workers turned it into a joke and said through a laughter, if it were me, I would go to the house, insert my street, they're obviously loaded man. Knowing we stayed on that street, we curiously inquired which house he was talking about. Then he said bluntly in a matter of fact tone, the one where the tigers at the window, could take that easy. It always looks empty. I was obviously young and naive. I didn't fully understand, so I said quite proudly, That's my house. He stopped what he was doing, but stared at us for what could have been a few short minutes. Then he said, There you go. You never know who you're talking to. It's a small world. Then started laughing. I forgot all about that until someone tried to break into our house a few weeks before Christmas. We didn't know anyone personally who was involved, but when they were all caught a few weeks later trying another house, people said it was the council workers who did it. They apparently weren't really workers, but were using it as an excuse because no one can remember seeing a van, and they were all in plain clothes with a vest without a logo on back. So years back, I was about 10 years old, I'm 19 now. My dad and I lived alone in a studio space in a condo. There was this one time before I went to sleep, I asked my dad what time he would be able to get home. We always slept beside each other and I can't sleep well without him beside me. He said he won't be able to come home that night because of a heavy workload, but will be able to eat lunch with me the day after. So I did my usual routine. I turned on the lights and turned on the TV and went to sleep. This was my way of sleeping alone, since I was a pussy back then. I need loud sounds and bright lights. I woke up at 2 or 3 in the morning and the lights and the TV were off. I was scared shitless, but then I felt my dad beside me, so everything was okay. I hugged him tightly and went back to sleep. The next morning, I woke up without my dad beside me, so I assumed he left for work. So I called him to ask him if he had breakfast and all that. I was on the phone with him and I asked him what time he went to work. He then was puzzled and said he wasn't able to come home and he's still in the office and will go home at lunchtime. Then it hit me, who the hell slept beside me? So 
So this happened about two years ago, and it still gives me the chills when I think about it. Before I explain the story, it's important to understand the layout of the second floor of my home. When you walk up the stairs, the first room is a bathroom, and then it's my room, then my parents' room. So usually I wake up once a night to go to the bathroom, and my parents never notice since they sleep like actual babies. Nothing will wake them up other than the sunlight in the morning, a really loud alarm, or a light turned on on the second floor. So anyway, I wake up and go to the bathroom as usual, and to avoid waking them up, I do not turn on the light. The toilet is close to the opposite wall from the door, so you have a clear view of the door when you do your business. So I finished what I needed to do, and then I turn towards the door, and oh god, there he is, only visible by the moonlight. I saw a very tall man in a baby mask, kind of like the mask Eleven wears in Stranger Things. I was so in shock that I didn't even scream, I just stared, and he stared back. After what felt like forever, he slowly puts his finger up to his mask and does a shush motion, tilted his head, and raised a knife as a threat. I felt like my heart dropped and I nodded. Then he took a step towards me and whispered, don't let the bed bugs bite, and then left the bathroom. I heard him slowly walk downstairs, open the front door and shut it. I immediately checked out the bathroom window, which looks down on my street, to make sure he had actually gone outside and was not still inside. I saw him wave at me and then run off. I ran out of the bathroom and into my parents' room to wake them up told them what happened and they called the police. They found him a couple hours later, completely high and with a couple of stolen items. He didn't steal anything from our house though. Anyway, every time I go to the bathroom at night now, I close the door, turn on the light, check the shower and do my business. Okay, this is bad vibes. That last story is claimed to be true, but I don't know if it is or not. You never really know. If you stay to the end, thank you. I really appreciate it. Make sure you hit that like button. But anyway, have a good night. And don't let the bed bugs bite. <laughs> Till next time.